welcome everyone to episode 63 of Today in the Scene. I'm Joe with Indie Arcade Wave, and I just want to say thank you for everyone that's checking us out, that have been following us and subscribing and sharing. It means a lot to us. Um, and we're going to jump into this week's episode. So this week, we're going to focus on an arcade. I know we've been talking to kind of like arcades, developers here and there, things like that. This week, we're going to be looking at one in Portland, Oregon called Ground Control. And I'm joined by their promotions manager, Dylan, who will be able to tell us a lot more about Ground Control. Um, so I guess let's just introduce them here. How's it going, Dylan? Hey, how's it going? Thanks Good. for having me. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm glad you got on here finally and you've got a cool backdrop and everything. Um, we've been kind of back and forth trying to get everything figured out. Life happens. So we're here now. So that's what that's what matters. Um, yep, yep. And I guess to just jump into it, just introduce yourself. Let people know who you are. Well, uh, my name is Dylan. I work here at Ground Control. been here about seven years. Um, and yeah, we're, we're in Portland, Oregon. Um, We've been here for about 22 years now. We're not the first bar arcade that's uh, that's been around, but we're one of the first. And um, yeah, we've uh, we've grown and expanded in the last in the last 20 couple, 22 years, and uh, we're just kind of getting things rolling back again, you know, uh, after reopening earlier this year. Awesome. Yeah. I mean, I guess that's kind of the first thing I wanted to touch on here is, can you tell us the story of how ground control came to be? Cause like you said, 22 years, that's a really long time. And yeah. I know that's kind of like right at the beginning of when all this like arcade bar stuff started to open up. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, ground control started as a, uh, as a record store that had some um, arcade games in it and uh, they sold, uh, they sold consoles and console games. And um, you know, eventually we had a, uh, we had four owners come together and uh, at the time I think it was just three and um, they bought ground control and they all had personal collections of games and they kind of brought them all together and uh, you know, started a classic arcade. So it was no longer a record store, um, but uh, a classic arcade that kind of moved around a couple of locations in Portland. And eventually we settled um, downtown at our current location. I think it was about 2004 or so that we settled here. And um, since then, we we finished a big expansion maybe four years ago, um, doubled our space. And uh, yeah, now we're a pretty, a pretty massive classic arcade. That's really cool that you guys started as a record store. That kind of makes me think of uh, Logan Arcade in Chicago. It was very similar. It was like Logan Hardware. They had... Um, uh, records in the front but then if you like ask the cashier to like go to the back there was like an arcade in the back and you could go hang out there uh that's you, you guys are the only other place i've ever heard of that started as a record shop so that's really really unique um, yeah it was a it was a couple of um it was a couple that uh that owned the record store and and technically started ground control but then um our new group of owners then bought it from them and yeah turned it into just the classic arcade although we did actually sell um sell consoles and you know like classic console games for a while but um we moved away from that and focused more on just like being an arcade and then eventually a bar um you know we got we started serving beer and wine and then eventually we got our liquor license and that just really helped us to be able to you know get more games and expand to where we are now yeah that that liquor revenue definitely helps build out the games in the arcade and the ones the arcades that are really really doing well have that liquor license so i know that's a big thing um you said you've been with ground control for like seven years somewhere in that ballpark now yeah uh, how did you get involved with ground control and like how have you moved on throughout ground control in the years oh man um it's funny actually the way that i first started coming to ground control as a regular this is gloriously nerdy um we had a weekly rock band karaoke night and uh, I had a friend who wanted to kind of get into karaoke. I'm not a karaoke guy myself, um, but my friend like really wanted to get into karaoke. And, uh, you know, we were playing rock band together at the time. And we, we, we found that Ground Control was doing these weekly events. So we we're like, hell yeah, let's, let's go and do that. That's, you know, not as nerve wracking, you know? And, um, and so we just started coming every week and hanging out here. And uh, I kind of became a regular and, um, brought some friends in and a couple of them got jobs working at the arcade. And uh, I started just helping out during the daytime, you know, cleaning and, and working behind the counter. 
and uh, just tried to get involved in as much stuff as I could here, as many different events and, um, and things as I possibly could. And uh, joined management, I'd say probably about four or five years ago at this point. So yeah, it's been um, it's been a, a long journey, <laughs> but uh, it's been fun all along the way. Yeah, I mean, working at an arcade just sounds like fun. I mean, you get to play games, you get to hang out. It it seems like a, a really enjoyable environment, especially to just to be a manager in. You know, even better than a restaurant. I would I would definitely think. Um, and it's a it's a privilege for sure. I really, I do uh, I do love it here. You get to nerd out like every day at work. You just get to be a nerd. Like that sounds like so much oh, yeah. fun. <laughs> Um, so what sets you guys at ground control apart from other arcades in the area? I know Portland is a really, really popular area for arcades, entertainment, just a big hub in, in the area. So what sets your arcade apart from other arcades in the area? Uh, I guess the first thing that comes to mind is that we, we really appreciate, um, you know, classic games with, with all of the, uh, original components, CRT monitors that we try to keep in good shape. We definitely... We're definitely guilty of like CRT hoarding <laughs> um, because we, you know, ideally we don't want to have any any games with an LCD screen if we can have like a, a proper CRT monitor. Um, you know, like the artwork we try to do, we try to restore games as as well as we can to their, you know, with original artwork and and hardware. Um, so we try to keep it as authentic as possible. I, I know I say that as we have these like flashing card readers <laughs> on all the games. And that's a change that we just had to make um, recently upon reopening. But um, until recently, we were just all quarter operated, um, you know, just really focusing on trying to provide the most, uh, the most like true, authentic, classic arcade experience. And I, I do think that we still do that. I know these things are just like saying, hey, look at us. We are, we are like Dave and Busters or something like that. But um, you know, we, we were able to utilize these to, um, when we needed to raise our prices, we were able to do it just a little bit rather than like making a 25 cent game, a 50 cent game, um, literally doubling the cost for these card readers. Those 25 cent games are now only, um, it works out to be like 33 cents. So, you know, we're, we're able to try to utilize that to stay afloat during, um, during this time, but, Otherwise, we're we're really focused on on having our games play as well as possible, and you know provide that really authentic experience. Right. Yeah. I mean, you're right. The card readers are it's not as retro as possible, but it is really convenient for the arcade operators, and it it takes away the the necess the necessity of collecting all the quarters and counting the quarters and taking the quarters to the bank. It just it makes everything so streamlined. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, we had 150 games in here before um, before shutting down due to COVID, and uh, that's a lot a of colossal, a colossal pain in the ass. Yeah, <laughs> it's a bit big collection. I mean, you got to do it every couple of days or once a week or whatever, and it's just uh, that's uh, 150 games is hours worth of collections. So that that yeah. definitely helps. Um, so you guys, you said you're an arcade bar kind of vibe. What mm -hmm. all do you guys provide? Like, do you have like you've got liquor, obviously games. What else mm -hmm. is there to do? Yeah, so um, as far as the bars, we have we have two sections. The ground control, we call it the blue side, which we're in right now. We're actually upstairs in the blue side. Real quick, I'm just going to show you a little bit. Yeah, stairs. Um, I can't really take the laptop very far, but um, downstairs we have a bar. Um, and on the other side, we call the red side. We have another... Uh, full bar between the two we have about um, about 20 taps they're both full bars uh, we have a full kitchen menu so um, so we've got that during all all hours and um, I, I know earlier I said about 150 games we kind of changed our layout a little bit to make it a little bit more spacious and comfortable as we're um, you know transitioning back to to normalcy I know it's we're, we've got a long way to go still, but um, we're keeping things a little bit more breathable right now. We have capacity way lowered. So at this point, we have about 100 games in here. Um, you know, when things are better, we'll be able to bring more games back in. But um, yeah, um, normally we have a pretty packed events calendar, um, whether it's like a console gaming tournament or a tournament on like, 
you know, one of our Street Fighter machines or Mario Kart. Uh, we have tournaments weekly, usually. Um, we've got DJs almost nightly. Um, again, right now, we're, we have a pretty bare events calendar. But um, typically, yeah, we've, we've always got something going on in here. Uh, we were running high score contests just on a monthly basis. We'd have one classic game, uh, like an arcade game and one pinball machine. Every month we would do this like social social media driven um, high score contest where people could submit their scores and we do fun prizes for that. Uh, we'll, we'll start doing that again as soon as we, um, you know, have the, the resources and are able to, you know, encourage more people to come out. But um, yeah, I'd say, you know, full bar, food, DJs, events, um, we're, we, we have all ages hours during the daytime. We're open from uh, noon to 5 p.m. for all ages. And then we're just 21 plus afterwards. Gotcha. Yeah. I mean, it, it sounds like you guys have plenty going on and you will have more going on in the future. Um, I know you sent me a walkthrough so that I can show people kind of what the arcade looks like everywhere. Uh, yeah. Just kind of rattle off the top of your head. Just name some of the games that you guys have in there. And definitely don't forget to mention any indies that you guys have in the arcade. For sure. Um, I mean, we kind of have most of the games that you would expect at a classic arcade. Not all of them. And sometimes, you know, we we have to um, swap games in and out. But, you know, as you expect, like Donkey Kong, Galaga, Frogger, Paperboy, um, Joust, a lot of those, that, that era of games we have. Um, we've got about 40 pinball machines. Um, a lot of, a lot from like the, the nineties and early two thousands. So a lot of good Valley Williams games, like behind me, you can see, uh, uh, scared stiff, um, right behind me. And that one, I actually got to, uh, I got to meet Elvira at, at one of the comic cons here and get her to sign that back last. Uh, definitely a little bit proud of that. <laughs> um, but yeah, I guess we got uh, Baby Pac-Man right here. A really strange, um, you know, video game and pinball hybrid, which is pretty fun. You can see it's got a little mini play field there. And uh, when you're playing Pac-Man, um, if you go off the side of the screen, rather than looping around to the other side, it takes it down to the, uh, to the pinball play field. So it's like a kind of a more unique game that we have. Um, we got Robotron and Burger Time back there. I mean, you know, beat them up like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Turtles in Time, Simpsons, which is a personal favorite of mine. Uh, we got Final Fight just over here. Um, but yeah, I, I, uh, we'll, we'll show you in the walkthrough. We have, we show off every game that we have going right now in that walkthrough. Um, in terms of pinball, um, I just turned off this black night because it was going to threaten us the entire time that we're talking. But we have the original black night here and then the newer one sort of rage and black night 2000 there. Um, we do have some newer pinball machines like uh, Jurassic Park just came out a couple of years ago. We've got that in the other room. Um, yeah, we try to just kind of even things out. Anything that we consider classic, whether it's um, whether it's a new game that we still feel deserves to be considered like a classic or, or falls in line with classic games. Like, um, like honestly, Killer Queen, um, which, you know, we could talk about Killer Queen forever, but, uh, we have that just downstairs here. And, um, yeah, in terms of indies, uh, we don't have a lot right now, but, um, Killer Queen is, is definitely a main staple in terms of pinball. We have a game called Total Nuclear Annihilation that was designed and, and created by one guy. It's just super impressive, really fun game. Um, and that came out just, a, I'd say a few years ago. Um, and yeah, we've had, uh, we've had some other indie games in here, um, just like temporarily and games that we would like to pick up eventually. But um, yeah, we, if you want to check out our list of games that we have on the floor right now, Go to groundcontrol.com slash game and we keep that updated. Sweet. Yeah, I was I was definitely browsing through that earlier just to see kind of what you guys have as like a precursor to watching that video that you're sending me. Mm -hmm. um, 
but uh, let's let's talk video games for you, like your history with video games, your favorite games, stuff like that. Kind of take me back through to like some of your earliest video game memories. I always find it so interesting with people that are either in the industry uh, long term or are actually developing their own games to see where they started and like what games really took hold over their 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 memories and like really drove them forward to keep trying new games. So where did you start with video games, some of your earliest memories? And then what are like some of your favorite games of all time? Oh, my God. <laughs> Uh, I, I feel like my dad got an NES, so I'm 33, I was born in 88, so um, my dad got an NES when I was probably just like two years old or something. I remember playing um, Mario Brothers, of course, and I remember playing Duck Hunt <laughs> with the uh, Everyone's with the played Duck Hunt, that's, that's, yeah. like, that's like the classic NES game. If you haven't played that one, I don't even believe you played the NES. <laughs> Yeah, um, I my earliest memories, honestly, like Duck Hunt was pretty crazy for me as like a small child. <laughs> um, Mario Brothers, I, I think the first game that I really, really loved was Mario Brothers 3. Um, that one, I mean, you know, what what else can you say about it? It's, it's an absolute, you know, greatest of all time classic. Um, so I started off with an NES. Um, had the SNES and a Genesis, um, loved the Sonic games. Uh, I, I love this random game called Ristar. I don't know. If, I don't even know if it's like a great game or not, but I have great memories of that game. Um, I played all sorts of games on the SNES, you know, all the Mario games, of course, I think that kind of goes without saying, but, um, Super Mario RPG, I think was my first, my first, like, you know, pretty, pretty, um, complex RPG for the age I was at. Um, I loved going to this this pizza spot where I grew up and, and playing in their arcades. I, I have these memories of being like maybe five or six years old playing The Simpsons and, um, and uh, Turtles in Time. I played that on SNES. But um, yeah, I have like early arcade memories, early Nintendo memories. Um, I got into PC gaming and I'd say probably middle school. So I, I got like really deep into, into PC games. I had that 56K modem. So, you know, I was playing like Team Fortress Classic and Counter-Strike uh, as I started going like middle school to high school. Um, yeah, man, I've, I've played all sorts of games over the years. Um, but other early memories, man, I just love, I love The Simpsons. I love... Uh, Turtles in Time, um, you know, I remember playing Donkey Kong and uh, and I think it was Centipede. Yeah, Donkey Kong and Centipede were these two arcade games at the, um, at the local movie theater in the small town I grew up in. So we didn't have like a lot of different arcades or places of games. But, um, but yeah, the, the Pizza Factory and, uh, and the movie theater. And I remember seeing my dad play pinball at the... Um, at the pizza factory, but I just wasn't interested in pinball at the time. I got super into pinball more recently, but um, yeah, as a child, I was more more uh, interested in the video games for sure. Yeah, I mean that that sounds like a, a definitely a reasonable past and some good some good games in there. Definitely some memorable games, some games that I played too. And um, I mean, you you have to try pretty much every Mario game. Like in, in that era, I think like up until like the 64, actually even out of like the GameCube, they're all so good. Oh my God. Um, it's, oh, it's yeah, hard I remember, to not play them. I remember um, when the N64 came out, uh, we rented one, like back when you could just rent consoles. We rented an N64 and I remember playing so much Super Mario 64 that I got like nauseous. It was probably the longest I'd played a video game for, like straight. Um, I think I learned my lesson. It was pretty. It was pretty awful. I was so just amazed by Mario sixty four as uh, as any small child probably was at the time. But um, when I actually got my own N sixty four, I got super into Mario Kart sixty four, um, uh, Star Wars Shadow of the Empire. Um, man, there was this racing game called Extreme G. <laughs> Uh, I love That's the N64. One. Yeah, yeah, man. I love the N64. I've still got mine went, like, right here. I've got like 40 games for it just sitting right right in front of my TV. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, I guess I guess the 
the console, it was like NES, the, the history was like NES, uh, SNES and Genesis. I never had a PlayStation um, until the PS2, um, kind of towards the end of the PS2 life cycle, I got really into the Guitar Hero. So a friend gave me his PS2. So I was like a PC gamer for a while. Um, all the Nintendo consoles, um, Halo got me into Xbox. Like oh yeah. Most, yeah. Like a lot of Halo people. got me into Xbox too. Yep. 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 Um, I'm still pretty, like pretty heavily an Xbox guy. Um, you know, game pass is just kind of ridiculous at this point. It's, um, it's, it's almost like a system seller. So, um, yeah, I, I play, uh, kind of all kinds of games. A little bit less on the on the PC side nowadays. As I've gotten older, I've gotten a little bit more appreciative of of uh, the couch gaming, and uh, you know, like story driven over of, multiplayer. A little bit, yeah. I mean, I I love some competitive Rocket League and um, any any shooter. You know, I I get really into. Um, yeah, I I I love too many games. It's it's hard to keep up. <laughs> And especially with pinball coming into my life, when I started working at Ground Control, um, I actually had the time and access to start getting into pinball, learning how it works, and I just got totally hooked. So now I'm on a pinball league team. I play in um, in ranked tournaments, and it's all the more challenging to balance these different like console games, arcade games, and pinball. But you know, it's a good problem to have a lot of uh fun competing for attention yeah i mean why why not right it, it's definitely something to do um i guess uh another question i had for you is kind of more on your side since you're the um kind of like day event coordinator you you get everything figured out for the arcade what events do you have planned for the future of ground control um and what kind of like indie events were you guys thinking about doing yeah um so for the longest time now we've been doing a monthly indie game night um, that is something I might actually be able to bring back this month. So yeah, you know, let's just say once it is safe to do so, and we feel like we can put on events without it creating any kind of, you know, feeling of discomfort for anybody who attends, um, indie game night will definitely come back. Uh, we, we like to focus on, you know, like same screen four player, uh, easy to learn kind of games where we um, will basically hook up a console to our big projector in the other room and um, and we'll have someone on hand that'll uh, get people to come over, check it out and, and teach them how to play, you know, like games like Towerfall, um, uh, Nidhogg, just like really simple, easy to pick up and play games. We love doing that. Um, and we'll kind of mix it up and like, we'll have like, Sometimes we'll do like party game focused indie game nights and sometimes we'll do uh, single player experiences. Like um, we definitely did a uh, Untitled Goose game night. <laughs> we just had people play an Untitled Goose game up on the projector all night. And um, you know, those events, they're, they're free. It's, we don't charge a cover at the door on nights where we do that. Um, there's actually almost never a cover to get into ground control. Um, we just have one on like Friday and Saturday nights because otherwise it gets pretty packed pretty quickly. Um, but uh, yeah, I think Indie Game Night, we might bring back this month. Um, if not, definitely next month. Um, and we kind of, you know, we, we look to see what, what's like a new indie game coming out. What would people, what would, what would draw people's interest and um, just be like weird and fun to see up on a projector and, and, you know, approachable to check out and, it's a really fun way to get people interested in, in newer games and to just like showcase some really cool indie games that a lot of our customers might not find out about otherwise. So if you have any, uh, any ideas, by the way, of, uh, of any new indie games that have either just come out or coming out soon, uh, we're always open to suggestions. And um, yeah, we just, uh, we usually run it on like a PS4, um, you know, or a, a Nintendo Switch, Sometimes there's local developers too. And anytime a local developer has a game, they bring it to us and we can set that up as well. Yeah, that sounds really cool. Like I think as a local developer, that would be awesome to be able to bring your game in and showcase it. And it just gives exposure to the to the locals. Um, I guess the last thing I wanted to ask you um, is just social medias. So give shout outs to social media so that people can find you guys, whether it be Facebook, Instagram, whatever, whatever you guys are active on. 
um, so that they can check you out and kind of follow along on the journey. Yeah, it's just ground control. Um, just one word, um, control with a K. Uh, and yeah, we're on Instagram. Most of our activity right now is on Instagram, but we've got an Instagram and a Facebook and a Twitter, and uh, we'll probably be starting TikTok eventually soon-ish. Um, join, join the kids on there. But um, yeah, our website's groundcontrol.com. Again, that's uh, ground control with a K instead of a C for control. And um, yeah, most, most of it is happening on Instagram these days, but uh, hit us up anywhere. Awesome. Well, I'll uh, throw all those links down in the description so people can find you guys. And I just want to say thanks again, Dylan, for coming on here and chatting about ground control. Um, if you like what we're doing here at Indie Arcade Wave, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. We appreciate everyone that comes to the channel that wants to ride the wave with us. And until next time, peace. Thanks so much. Thank you.